Fifth Hour Radio Show. So, Natalia, what's the fascination with primates? Uh, what got you hooked on monkeys that you decided to make it a, a career? <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a fun and exciting question because I actually had recurring King Kong nightmares as a kid. So I actually had a, a quite a big fear of primates when I was really little that um, I don't know if I developed some sort of Stockholm syndrome and, and, and fell in love with King Kong just like Fay Ray did in the movie. Well, not fell in love, but had you know empathy and sympathy. Um, but I always was fascinated with primates, and I think a lot of humans are, just because they're so much like us. Um, the more I've studied them, the more I realize there's far more similarities sometimes than differences um, in many of their, their behaviors and um, reproductive strategies, diet. So for me, I think it's kind of understanding something that's very similar to us, but, uh, but different enough. And I work specifically in primate conservation, which in a way, if you think about it, because we evolved alongside our primates and, our, and humans actually evolved alongside one another. When you're saving non-human primates, you're also saving our own species because, as you know, we're doing a lot of really crappy things to the earth. And mm-hmm. in order for us to survive in the future generation, we got to kind of change the way we live. So, which, so which King that, Kong movie? Which, I'm sorry, I thought you was done talking. Which King Kong movie are you talking about? Oh uh, well, I watched the the, the original one, um, the King Kong movie in 1933, I believe. Okay, yeah, um, yeah, there, well, there you go. I, 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 I can see why it gave you nightmares. <laughs> yeah, that one is definitely, yeah. And then you got the 1970s version with Jessica Lange, a little bit better, not so scary. And then 2005, um, Peter Jackson did a wonderful job creating a very uh, sympathetic version of King Kong. And, of course, Andy Serkis playing King Kong did an exceptional job getting done all the movements and facial you know, um, features and, and expressions of a gorilla. So out of all these King Kong movies, which one were your favorite? Well, 2005, of course, as far as loving gorillas, I thought was the best representation of what a gorilla looks like. But, you know, the heart-wrenching agony of the 1933 version was, was kind of got me in love with primates to begin with. Um, it, was, it, really it, showed... it definitely was oh. heart-wrenching. Did you, how did you feel about him mixing him up with Godzilla? <laughs> well, I love dinosaurs and giant lizards like Komodo dragon. So for me, I don't know. I think it's kind of fun. Well, me, um, to, me personally, I just couldn't, I couldn't feel sorry for a giant lizard getting shot. No, it's, you know, they're, they're little brain, you know, it's not as uh, uh, powerful as a, a primate brain, you know, getting decimated by a human. That, that's far <laughs> more, I think, painful and heart-wrenching than a, a giant, you know, T-Rex. <laughs> so you're also an actress, you're a comedian. Does one take precedence over the other? Or are you just, are you just as passionate with your acting career as with anthropology? Well, that's you know it, it, I'm trying to meld the two, which is a funny <laughs> funny combination. Of course, a lot of people are surprised when I say I'm an anthropologist and an actor and a comedian. But I think there is a way that they all can collide and, and work together to inform the public about science. And um, so I'm, I'm passionate about all of them. Of course, you know primate conservation is a huge passion of mine. That you know, I, I love what I do. I love the primates that I work with. I work with these where a spider monkey in, in Panama. Um, and I feel like I can use um, my comedy and the acting and my writing, because I write my own videos, um, to get the information out there, to basically democratize science, doing science for the mainstream, because I feel like the more we know, the more we can um, change the way we live and, and also you know, teach our children uh, about science. And, and they can take that information and hopefully better the world. So I think, you know, the, the, the combination of, of my passion is what um, kind of sets me apart and, and will um, hopefully bolster science in the future and, and get people really involved and, and um, you know, maybe become activists and, and inspire future conservationists. So now you, did, you talked about doing work with the spider monkey. Are, are they as rambunctious as everybody says they are? <laughs> they are. They actually, I always joke, the best workout ever is chasing spider monkeys. Um, especially because the area that I worked in is it's incredibly hilly. But, you know, I'm running uphill, I'm falling downhill, I'm, you know, trying to basically keep up with these incredibly fast um, spider monkeys because they actually, they're not true brick eaters. Uh, brick eating is the swinging motion that, you know, gibbons, which are a type of um, lesser ape, actually, uh, they swing through the trees with great stealth and ease. I call them ninjas of the forest. Spider monkeys are quite as stealthy as them, but they're pretty close and they are fast. So, um, they, they're pretty rambunctious. They, the area that I worked in, they're actually afraid of humans. 
so they not only are rambunctious, but they don't want to be around us. So it, it's a real duty to keep up with them. And they like to throw stuff at us <laughs> if they feel like we are um, a danger to them. So what area are you <laughs> talking about? Poop. Pardon? What area are you talking about? Where, where do these come from? Um, I work in the Israel Peninsula of Panama, which is on the Pacific Coast. Okay. And uh, that part of uh, Panama is the most heavily deforested area of Panama. Um, and it's a dry tropical forest. Basically what's happening is um, landowners are cutting down the forest for cattle ranches. And these forests, you know, what they do is they sometimes leave little pockets of forest um, up, whether it's because it's too treacherous to cut down. Some of the areas are just so steep that it's not worth it to them for to cut down the forest. And that's where spider monkeys are hanging out. So it's creating these, like, basically little islands on a landscape of pasture. And so what I'm trying to do is understand where these spider monkeys are where the corridors are, because a lot of times the areas that they don't cut down also are streams. So they're streams that are connecting fragment, fragments, and the spider monkeys are using those to get from one fragment to another for food. to also meet with other spider monkeys, because if you think about it, if there's a little tiny fragment and there's no way out of it, they're kind of stuck with the same group of people. It's like if you lived with your family and that's the only, you know, those are the only people you had to meet with, you'd have problems. Mm-hmm. So what we're trying to do is to... Uh, work with landowners just to, to um, maintain corridors. And also, because in that region, it's on the Pacific coast, so they've got a lot of winds coming through. And without forests to block the wind disturbance, it's turning it into a desert. So every year I go back down there, it's drier and drier and drier. So if we try to show them the monetary benefits of reforestation and corridor maintenance, we're hoping that that will also benefit them as well. You kind of hit the jackpot by being cast on ten million, uh, ten million dollar Bigfoot bounty because you got to combine your love of uh, acting with your love of anthropology. Now I look, sure did. Now, 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 Natalia, I watch most of these shows, and I, I have a feeling okay. you would have loved to have contributed a small bit of your comedic stylings, given some of the characters or contestants on that show. Did you have to hold back that part of you, or you? Um, were... That's a great question. Actually, I did. I did. I held back a little bit, but I actually gave out a lot of jokes and, and dished out some to give to, to Dean and whatnot. But, um, and Dr. Todd is a very funny man as well. He just, uh, he seems very serious. But we both made a lot of jokes, but I think they wanted to keep the tone of the show a little bit more serious. Mm. So we kind of edited, not edited, to be a little bit more of, um, more Simon rather than Paula, if you from the yeah. American Idol reference. And so, yeah, it was tough. Because, I mean, I, I know the, the contestants, they... We're all really, really intelligent, great in the forest. A lot of them are hunters. They know how to track animals. And so, I mean, I learned a lot from them as well as, I think, vice versa. But, um, yeah, they were hysterical. I would have loved to have ripped more with, like, Richter and, and of course, um, you know, Stacy and Dave. And, and, you know, Dave and Dan, the, you know, the Green Brothers were wonderful and, and really hysterical. So we had a great crew. Now, your role as a judge, good. your role as a judge on the show was to teach these these Bigfooters, these squatchers, on how to correctly collect data in the field, you know, that might lead to the proof of the existence of Bigfoot. Now, one of the scenes that stuck out in my mind is of the contestant, I think his name was Michael Merchant. Now, he was actually digging through uh, some of what you might call scat. That's what you called it on the show? Yeah. Okay, yeah. and I, I'm not a scientist, so excuse me, you know, I call it shit. <laughs> Oh, I call it shit too. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> he was digging through this uh this animal shit, and he starts tasting it and eating it. I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that's not correct procedure for collecting data no. in the field. Why Why did he do that? I mean, he was eating it like it was the wasn't the first time he had been doing it. I don't think it probably was the first time with Michael. Uh, you know, he he does think he's actually uh, you know studied biology and is a biologist, but he does things his own way in the field. I do not. <laughs> sample my turds. I leave the turds for the other uh, animals to eat if they would like, like dung beetles. Um, but, you know, that was his way of, of uh, deciphering what was in it. It was kind of like his, him doing his preliminary DNA test to see what exactly was in the stack. I'd rather just put it through a machine or, or pro- properly dissect the crap under a microscope to see what's in it. But <laughs> he went ahead and just tried it, you know. So I guess kudos. To him? <laughs> was that his way, you think, of keeping himself on the show, the shock value, I guess? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, you have to remember it's a television show. It, it, as much as we want science to be the rule of the roost, you know, it's also a spectacle. And stuff like that gets on TV, you know. I, I think it's probably, you know, another contestant started 
devouring tour church, they would probably get a little bit more airtime as well. So, <laughs> you know, we, we wanted, I mean, even like in the last, uh, in the last episode, when, when Stacey, when Stacey was asked if he would make love to a female. That pastor, was my next question. <laughs> yes, he would tear it down. Yes, you know, I, I told you I didn't want to talk too much about the contestants, but Stacy, I think they were going down the river or something at the time, mm-hmm. and he uh, he turns to his partner and he asks him, you know, if he would have found a female Bigfoot in in the wild, and I guess in rut. I don't know the correct way to put it, but if he would, yeah, tear it down. <laughs> yeah, I, I found that to be quite humorous, but that's. I mean, I, I'm I love Stacy. He's 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 a funny guy. He's very gregarious and outgoing and, and, and is very passionate about finding Bigfoot. But I think for him, you know, part of him, I think, is joking around. But I don't know. Sometimes I wonder about Stacey. Maybe if he <laughs> did find a female squat, he would, uh, in his terms, tear it down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how she'd feel about that. I would hope it would be consensual tearing down. Well, maybe she thinks Stacy was attractive. I don't know. <laughs> he, is, he does have a very, uh, well, you know. A mountain man theory, type so. of way about him. Exactly. <laughs> and, and, and one more question about these contestants. You had teammates Roe and Justin, and Justin actually claimed to have shot a baby Bigfoot, wound it, and finally, you know, finish it off by strangling it to death. You know, and going back to an earlier question, how hard was it to hold back your comedy side in these situations? And, you know, on your professional side as well. It was tough. It was very tough. Well, he, uh, he said he killed one. He shot one. He shot before he even knew what it was, and then the other one got to be strangled with his bare hands. Um, we got into it a little bit, yeah. When he first told me, I, I, I think my face was just yeah, blank. I could not, I could, I could not even form words because I was just so blown away. Um, and we did get into it once because he was talking about how because he had done this and and that this little baby Bigfoot had soiled itself, so he knows for sure what Bigfoot that looks like. And then I asked him, well, what does it look like? And he said, well, I don't know because I, I, I can't remember. And I, I pointed out, well, that makes no sense. You just said you knew what it looked like because you killed one, and now you're saying you don't know what it looked like. So well, I, know I if caught I, him in a if, lot of little... If I was out in the wilderness and found a mythical or, or a rare creature that no one could find, that would be the first thing I would want to do is strangle it. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> he's, he's clearly a sound, a sound body, body and mind. Yeah, he definitely... I, I did not believe that story. One iota, by the way. Um, but he's made a name for himself in the Bigfoot world because of that story. He has. And sometimes you have to do things like put out a sex tape or say that you killed Bigfoot to get big in any sort of weird community. But apparently it's worked for him. Um, <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't the sex tape option. <laughs> yeah. Well, that, we'll leave that to Stacy. <laughs> okay. Yeah, exactly. He sounds like he's well on his way. Oh, dear God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's steer away from the $10 million Bigfoot bounty. What else do you have going on right now? I know you had a you have a YouTube series with your co-host, uh, Dr. Todd Disatel, called Talking Shit with Dr. Todd and Natalia. Are you still doing those? Uh, yes, sir. I actually just released uh, the last one that we shot in the series, which was, I think, a total of six. Yeah. And we're, I'm going to go back out. He's actually in Cambridge right now on sabbatical, but when he comes back to New York, we plan to shoot more. Um, and it's a fun series that basically we talk about the science we did on the show that maybe didn't get as much attention because those contestants were pretty um, exciting and science might have taken the back seat. But we talk about, you know, nails versus claws in primates. We talk about bipedalism and, and primate locomotion. We talk about poop, turd, shit. Um, all that stuff gets talked about on the show, and I, I'm able to use the comedy to explain it. So, you so also, um, that's exciting. Yeah, and you also like to talk about the evolution of butts and boobs. And I'm assuming you, sure you, you add a little lighthearted feel to this, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I try to make it fun. So yeah, I did a video called The Evolution of the Story of Boobs, the Breast Tail Ever Told. And it's about the evolution of breasts in women. And um, I was on the Today Show. They actually found my video a few years ago and brought me on the Today Show. And a few days later, Stephen Colbert of the Colbert Report made fun of us saying, boobs, what about butts? And so I created Butt Week, which <laughs> wasn't just, but it kind of took off. And um, actually, you know, I, I did a few videos on, on butts and the evolution of butts. And I also talked about, um, you know, uh, the importance of getting colonoscopies when you reach 50. I did a video called Love Your Butt. I did a PSA called uh, Play With Your Balls about testicular cancer. So I try to make all these health and science issues um, fun and exciting by adding some humor and, you know, make it a little sexy, but not, you know, not too sexy, but just enough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, so it's a, it's a fun way to, I think, you know, get science out there. So what, what, do you, what do you do outside of work? I mean, what's play like for you? I mean, any hobbies, TV shows that give you some relaxation? Oh, gosh. Um, I love comedy. So, you know, I, I grew up watching lots of Mel Brooks films. Um, so, I, you know, I always go back to the old classics. I actually was a huge fan of, um, you know, Monty Python. And, of course, um, I really quite sad that Harold Ramis passed away because I was a huge mm. Ghostbusters fan. Yeah, I was so hoping we'd have another like, one of those, yeah. Man, he's well, he's just so brilliant. Um, and not just one movie and, and, and many that he did, but um, as far as TV, I you know, I'll try to catch like I, I love I watched Saturday Night Live my whole life and I like to watch it, um, and kind of just see the trends and um, you know, the different bands and actors coming on. And I, I still write comedy, so um, it kind of inspires me to keep doing that. And um, I love BBC shows, there's a show called Garth Marenghi's Dark Place. It was one of my favorite shows for a long time. It's a really weird, twisted show that, I don't know, I think it's just, um, it's, it's brilliantly written. So what was it like so, going on the Artie Lang show? I know uh, we had Mike Bichetti on our show. Mike's a great guy. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have a good time on his show? I, I, what, I had a wonderful time. Yeah, I noticed yeah, you, was wearing, uh, you was wearing your Bigfoot pendant. I'm curious where you yes. got that. That's uh, Sassy Glassy. Her name is Tammy Murray. And um, yeah, check out her site. Uh, if you go to Etsy... I, I believe it's, oh gosh, a little darling here. I believe it's Sassy Glassy. If you Google that, you'll find her. She makes beautiful pendants. She does the stunt ape. She does Sasquatch. Definitely check her out. I like to walk her jewelry anytime I can because she's a wonderful artisan and, and you know, part of the Squatching community. I, I actually like have one of those pendants from Sweet and Sassy Glassy, Tammy. You do? Yes. <laughs> Yay. Oh, good. Yeah, it's Sweet Sassy Glassy. Yeah, no, she's, and she's just very kind, and, and that was one of the things I wanted to say. Is I, I really want to thank, I don't know if any of the Bigfoot community will be listening, but I want to thank them for being so open to me and, and letting me kind of join their community and, and and being kind to me because I know it's really easy when you're so passionate about something and somebody's telling you, well, I don't know if it exists, you know. Yeah, yeah I, I have to be honest with you. You know, i got to be mm -hmm. honest with you. I actually know Michael and Ro and uh, Justin and who else was it? Uh, yeah. In, in a roundabout way, uh, mm -hmm. and I don't want to keep you on here for too long or whatever, but okay. me and me and my co-host, uh, I had got a new field recorder. We were in a band, and we was wanting to test it out. We had brought it outside of our town, and uh, we just started yelling, making sounds and stuff, and uh, we played it back, and we thought it sounded like a Bigfoot. And at the time, <laughs> at the time, man, we did not know that there was mm -hmm. such a thing called a Bigfoot community. Oh, no. So we put this video up on YouTube, and, and, and I caught a lot of flack from it because they called me a hoaxer, okay? Oh. <laughs> but I didn't know. I was just doing it for fun. You know what I mean? Silly. And the next, yeah. thing, next thing you know, um, I get a call from Finding Bigfoot. Uh, the, oh, wow. Yeah, the producer, uh, I'm not going to say her name on here, but the, one of the producers of Finding Bigfoot, and she wanted to know, you know, about the, the recording or whatever. And, of course, I told her, you know, hey, it wasn't real. You know what I mean? Yeah. And But this, this started a little whirlwind thing where all these people started contacting me. And, uh, you know, and that's how I got uh, in touch with these people. I got to become pretty decent friends with them, actually. And uh, uh, But I had those people out there that hated my guts because they called me a hoaxer. And it wasn't really anything to do with hoaxing. It was just having fun and not knowing a big there was a big fit, uh, Bigfoot community. Yeah. I mean, well, I, mean I don't know. I, they can be pretty, um, they, they can be a little tough to deal with. I've gotten attacked a little bit by some. Yeah. Um, and well, not so much attack, but just, I mean, I don't know. Oh, they can they get, get, they can get pretty nasty. Now I had, a, I had actually it had a death threats. Be honest no. with you. I had people oh, call me, no. say they're going to come to my house. Ooh. They're going to set me straight and they said some other stuff. And that's oh, actually when I kind of started backing out of it a little bit. Uh, yeah. I still keep in contact. Like, uh, you know, it, the, the subject fascinates me because I didn't know uh -huh. anything about it at first. But once I did this little video or whatever, I got to researching it more and more. And, 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 and do I believe there's a Bigfoot? No, I don't believe there's a Bigfoot, but the kid inside me wants it to be real. You know what of I mean? Of course, yeah. And I don't know what, uh, do you believe? Do I believe? I'm a skeptic. I mean, I, of course I want to believe. I'm, I'm somebody who had recurring King Kong nightmares. I still sort of fascinate, I, I can talk, I'm fascinated about that <laughs> sort of idea that there could be a giant bipedal 
hominid wandering the Pacific Northwest, sure, that would be great. However, I know that the probability of it is adjacent to zero. Mm -hmm. Um, Just because of what I know about primate evolution and and what it it takes to um, sustain a large primate like that and how it could go undetected for so long, I don't know. I think it's highly improbable. Um, But, uh, you know, at the same time, I I respect their theories. And, and, like, when they do come to series, like, I will get some of the contests after, you know, the show has finished airing, they still contact me and will ask me questions. Like, Mm -hmm. hey, you know, I I got recently, Stacey Brown actually tweeted to me the other day asking me if there's any primates that are known for pooping in the same place um, over and over again because he found, like, a huge stat pile that looks like multiple, somebody keeps going back to poop to that area. And I said, well, do you think Bigfoot is, staying in one place or if they're, if they're nomadic I doubt they're going to just keep going like oh gotta go to I gotta hike to my poop spot yeah you know? campers. <laughs> oh, exactly that doesn't seem you know my bath is going to be 10 feet away I'm not going to go hike a quarter mile to my normal pooping spot um, especially if they want to stay inconspicuous you know if you if they want to stay hidden why would they pick one giant poop pile so I mean it's all, like things like that that you have to think through and, and you know yeah. And and I ask those questions and because they might have you know, and that's the cool thing is this show I got to see their their uh, theories evolve and change as they gain more information. Do you think there do you think there'll be another scientists. Bigfoot bounty show? Are, is, will there be a, another one or how was the ratings on that? Um they were decent, I think, the ratings for, for a cable show. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's gonna be another season. I have not gotten the word yet. So um I'm in the meantime, you know, Making videos. I uh, I've been writing my writing and pitching my own television shows because I'm I'm trying to get a science comedy show off the ground. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm totally open for another season. Is there a website uh, our listeners can go to to get more info about your career and upcoming projects, yeah. social media and stuff like it's, that? Sure, it's uh, NataliaReagan.com, and um, I'm on Twitter too. My handle is Natalia13 Reagan, and I try very much to to get back to people. So if you follow me and you tweet me I'll, I'll do my best to, to respond um or you know just i usually i follow back as well i try to really kind of keep in touch with any sort of fans because i do appreciate it i really do mm-hmm. so i want to i want to know what's going on with you guys or if you have a question um i'd like to answer it i also have a new web series coming out called new age girls where it's an acting show uh or i'm i'm acting in it i'm also writing in it um but it's also a a show about four new age girls living in Ojai, California, that's going to have a little bit of a sci-fi element, mm-hmm. and there might be a little Bigfoot fun in it. Okay. So, <laughs> it, it, it sounds like something I'd be interested in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's going to have a nice sci-fi fun element, but it's 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 kind of a risk. It's a mock reality show, like Real Housewives of Atlanta, but it's it's funny. It's well written. Um, the, the actresses are all hysterical and beautiful. So there's a lot of draw, I think, <laughs> with the hot, the hot ladies. So I want to thank you for joining us on the show today. I know uh, Sundays aren't, you know, great for everybody, but I want to thank you for taking time out of your day. Of course. Thank you for having me. Radio Show.